This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Use promo code OLIVE for 20% off and free shipping on any products on their website. Link in the description. Enjoy the video. We all love baseball, that's why we're gathered here on this channel, but there comes a point in time where players simply can't do it anymore, and sometimes we get to see that frustration come out on the field. They're left with a few options. They can go back to the minors and hack it there and try and reinvent themselves, or for some, they can simply walk away from the game, hoping that what they took away from it is enough to suffice. Something especially difficult about baseball is that the retirement option happens to a lot of younger guys who didn't really get a fair shot or enough at-bats or enough innings pitched to fully show their potential. There is a third option, though. And that's the one we're going to focus on in today's video. Sometimes players take their talents overseas, to the KBO or NPB in Japan, and while those leagues may not have as much talent as the MLB, they still produce some of the most entertaining baseball on earth, and give casted out players an opportunity to play competitive baseball again. One of my favorite stories in baseball is the guy who got washed out in MLB, went overseas to the NPB or KBO, and reinvented themselves only to return to the MLB better than they were before. Guys like Dan Strelly are in the process of that right now, whereas guys like Josh Lindblom have already gone through that process and returned to the the MLB stronger than they were before. He's currently projected to make the Milwaukee Brewers rotation for a second consecutive season, and they are the team we're going to be discussing today, albeit not a pitcher though. Today we'll be talking about a very special first baseman. This guy went over to the KBO after a few years in the MLB and became one of the faces of Korean baseball in just three years. After being taken in the seventh round by the Toronto Blue Jays and playing a few short seasons in 2011 and 2012, Eric Thames' MLB career was looking like it was already over. So he took a chance and signed a contract with the NC Dinos of the KBO. I understand why players do this, they work their whole careers to make it to the top level and if they're not given a fair opportunity or simply underperform, they're gonna want to play more and prove themselves. It must be very jarring to jump to an entirely different country even though you're playing the same sport. But this clearly did not phase Eric Thames because as soon as he went over to the KBO, he just started to rake and rake and rake. Eric Thames' numbers in the KBO are beyond comprehension. He led the league in major offensive categories over three different seasons and had one of the few 40-40 seasons that the KBO has ever had in 2015. 124 home runs in three seasons, a 450 OBP, an OPS above 1100, all of these are insane. In the 2015 season, he was the only player in KBO history to hit for the cycle twice in one season. 2015 also was the year that Thames won the KBO MVP award. He also won a gold glove that year at first base. Scouts of the NC Dinos found him in the Venezuelan Winter League and turned him into a premier all-star. He turned this three-year performance into a three-year deal with the Milwaukee Brewers worth about $15 million, and then, as soon as he got back to the MLB, he made his presence known. But before we get into all that, as always, I just want to remind the viewers that if you've been watching all the videos and enjoying the content on my channel, you should definitely hit the red button below. It's going to help me reach more baseball fans and create more content for you guys. So if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it because it will enable me to do this more in the future. But without further ado, let's get into Eric Thames' Monster Month. The Eric Thames signing went mostly under the radar during the 2016 offseason, but come opening day, Thames was the starting first baseman making his Milwaukee debut on opening day against the Colorado Rockies. Perennial fans of MLB knew of Thames' name from his earlier days with the Blue Jays and Seattle Mariners, but this was his first real shot at getting an everyday starting gig in a long time. However, Thames did impress early on in Milwaukee's first week of the season, batting 318 with an OPS over 900, a home run and four RBIs to go with that as well. The Brewers were taking flyers on a bunch of guys this season hoping for a lot of potential. This includes guys like Jesus Aguilar and Travis Shaw. So to see early progress with Eric Thames was very encouraging to Milwaukee fans. Coming off a season where the Cubs won the World Series, the Brewers were stuck in a very competitive NL Central division and needed every bit of offensive help they could get. And early on, it looked like Thames was going to be the answer for the first base problem that they had for so many years. Was he going to be Prince Fielder? No. But it was entirely realistic that Thames could be one of the premier left-handed first basemen in the league. But I don't think any Brewers fan predicted what was coming next because Eric Thames was about to pop off. Oh, oh, my God! Oh! Oh, my fucking God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I'm so sorry to anybody who hasn't heard that audio in years and just had an intense nostalgia flashback. But that was the type of reaction I had when I started seeing Eric Thames clubbing baseballs in the middle of April like it was his job. 
Well, I mean, it is his job, so that makes sense. In the same span of games as his first week in the season, something with Eric Thames clicked. Seven home runs in seven games in the middle of April, a 484 batting average and an OPS nearing 2,000 made him one of the most profiled players in the entire league, years after being completely forgotten and left off rosters. He was getting heavy all-star consideration early, and things were looking really good for Brewers fans. Thames set the Brewers club record for home runs in the month of April with his 11th on April 25, my birthday, in a 9-1 win against the Cincinnati Reds. Thames killed the Reds, as most of his home runs came against Cincinnati. Eight on highest batting average is 255, and the second highest OPS was 881, a full 100 points lower than his April total. Eric Thames, plainly put, is the king of April, and much of those numbers have to do with his April 2017 performance. By the end of April 2017, Eric Thames had put Major League Baseball on notice, leading the league in home runs, coming in second for slugging percentage, third for on-base percentage and home run fly ball rate, and top five in other major offensive categories, including OPS, weighted on-base average, weighted runs created plus, and of course, Fangraph's war. However, as the story goes with most of our Monster Month videos, regression took a toll on Thames' all-star caliber season, and in May and June he took a serious step back. He began striking out more and pulling the ball more, so it seemed like he was trying to hit more home runs rather than just doing what gave him success in April, and by the second half he'd started hitting for average again, but his strikeouts continued to go up. His April numbers were impossible to be matched, but because of the stark decline he took in the two months that followed, Eric Thames would miss the all-star game. But with the help of Thames and other key pieces down the stretch, the Brewers put together their first 85-plus win season since 2011, the last time they had won the NL Central. By 2018, they were back in the playoffs, winning the Central and making it all the way to Game 7 of the National League Championship Series. Eric Thames had moved to the outfield by 2018, but was still a huge part of the Brewers' success by then. Thames truly reinvented himself in the KBO and gave his career second life when he came back to the Brewers with an explosive April. As of 2021, after finding no contract offers, he's headed back overseas, this time to the the MVP in Japan. Here's hoping he finds more success and gives us one more monster month. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.